Hello, I am back in England. Rainy, rainy England. It was very much a hot cookie for lunch kind of afternoon today. I'm back at work, pretty exhausted. I got back to my flat last night. So I got back, hang on, I'll just, what day is it? It's Monday, it's Monday today. Friday, we got back from Corfu. Saturday, Sunday, I was at my family home, but I was really, really busy whilst I was there. Got back here last night at like 11, which was a mistake. <laughs> Should have come back earlier. And I didn't, I just, I just didn't, I just kept putting it off. And then I decided I would really like myself better in the morning if I unpacked last night, which I was correct. I did like myself better in the morning, but that meant I was up until one unpacking and, and then was back at work this morning. So I'm a little bit sleepy. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm a little, squidge sleepy but 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 I am excited because I have plans for things going forward over the next coming months I have made plans because that feeling when you finish your holiday and you are back to work and that thing you were looking forward to has happened it's such a horrible feeling that I felt like I need to have lots of different things to look forward to so I have trips that are going to be coming up that I will tell you about closer to the time because I'm very excited I also have Yalk in a couple of weeks or month a month a month, which I'm so, it, actually it's like a month today, hang on, it's nearly a month today, I'm so excited for YAG, YAG is the Young Adult Literature Convention, it happens every year in London, and it's occupying the top floor of the Olympia where Comic Con is being held on the bottom two floors, and it's basically just a giant book expo of YA authors and book signings and agent talks and publisher talks, it's so much fun, mainly for the people that are there and getting to see all of my bookish friends in one place. It's such a great event. It's where I've met so many of my closest friends now. It's so brilliant and it happens every year as I say, but it hasn't happened for the last two years because of COVID. So this is gonna be the first one in three years pretty much. So the last one was 2019. So yeah, three years ago now, which is kind of sad. So I'm very excited for that, but I'm also planning on doing a couple other things coming up. So I'm very excited to be able to take you along on that content journey. Today, this week, I'm going to be reading The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. This is my Patreon book club pick. I'm reading it on Kindle. I do have it as a physical book as well, but it was on my holiday TBR and I started on the plane back because I finished my current read on the plane. So I had it on my Kindle ready to go and it is a mystery thrillery type of book about a woman who has been told she's inherited this rather large sum of money from her grandma who has died, except she's pretty sure that's not actually her grandma and that she has nothing to do with this family. But she decides she's gonna go and try and claim this money anyway. It's interesting, but at the same time frustrating. Like, I don't understand why throughout this whole introductory part, that I'm only at the start of this book, she's never questioned that maybe her mum wasn't completely honest with her. Maybe this woman is related to her. She's just completely like, I'm gonna have to con them. And I'm thinking like, I don't know, if I received a letter saying that this person's died and you're related to them and you've inherited this money, my first thought wouldn't be, I'm gonna con them. It would be, oh, how have I possibly been related to this person? I'm gonna find out like, what's happened there that that isn't something I know about. So yeah, I'm I, that part I'm finding a little bit silly at the moment because she just doesn't question that maybe her mum might have lied to her about her family lineage and who was related to who. She just goes straight for the, I'm not related, let's con them out of their money kind of approach. So she is a likable character though. Like she's a good person and a good character. It's not quite as black and white as I'm making it sound. But anyway, that's my current read. Anyway, I'm gonna go and not fall asleep. I'm gonna go and do productive things. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, but I'll speak to you later. Hello, I need to bring you a quick story time because last night I was on Patreon live sprints with Lauren from Fiction Tea and she'd sent me a package that arrived yesterday. She sent it as next day delivery specifically to arrive yesterday for me to unbox on the live sprints. And I had no idea what it was and I unboxed it live and I wanted to tell you what was in the box. So if you know my reading tastes, you may know that I really enjoy the Poppy War series by R.F. Quang. The Poppy War is one of my favourite books of all time. I think it's a fantastic blend of so many brilliant things and I just absolutely love it. So when Babel was announced, being not only about language and translation, which I find really interesting, but also being set in Oxford, which is one of my favourite cities. It's the city I was born in. It's somewhere that means a lot to me. I got very excited that these two were kind of merging together and that this was also also going to be our Quang's writing and just it had me very excited very very excited so I did put in a request for an arc but the arc 
never came and I don't really know why, I don't know if it didn't get sent out or if it got lost in the post, but unfortunately the ARC never came. So I kind of just accepted that I was going to be waiting until September, which was release date, which is absolutely fine, very excited still to read the book in September. And then I got a package. So you can probably tell where this is going, but I opened up the package from Lauren and inside there was a little note. So the note has, has my name, it has a tea stained page and it says, Beth, term starts in September, prepare yourself. So as soon as I saw that, I kind of freaked out. I knew it was coming. I got very excited because Lauren had sent me through her spare Babel art and oh my gosh I am so excited to have the arc of this and to be able to read this I'm trying to plan it into my TBR for this month and work out what prompts it'll fit for whatever -a thon which I think it'll fit quite a few of but oh my gosh I'm so excited that I have this arc I'm so thankful for Lauren to sending it to, for sending it to me also Lauren was at the event for this in Oxford a couple of weeks ago this is how she got the spare arc and She's got it personally signed for me by the author. I've just... What? I am so happy to have this. I am so ecstatic to read this book. I cannot wait. It is probably my most anticipated release of this year. I have very high hopes for it. I'm sure it'll live up to it. The reviews look absolutely amazing. But oh my gosh, I'm so happy. It also came with a couple of little extras. There's this booklet here that has a map on it and a little bit of information on the reverse side there. Also have this pencil that says make magic with words and this little badge, which I love. So yeah, that was that was my quick little story time. I'm so excited. Cannot wait to read it. So Lauren wanted me to wait to unbox this on Patreon Live Sprints, which I did. And now there is a documentation of me opening this, which is really cool. So you can see my reaction in the next clip. But wait. I know what it is! Did you can't get in! That's what this says. Term starts in September. Prepare yourself! I want to catch the box. I'm dead. Did you really think I wasn't going to send you my spare arc? <laughs> I did. Um, do yourself a favour and open the book. <laughs> you got it signed! So obviously, I was very overwhelmed, very happy. Yeah, so excited, so excited to read this book. I'm currently reading The Death of Mrs Westaway, still by Ruth Ware. I've only been reading about a chapter a night because I have been watching Stranger Things and also editing my holiday vlog, which is currently pretty long. So I'm working on a lot of footage at the moment for that, but I'm excited because I'm nearly done. And that means I get to then watch it through, upload it, and then you guys can all see it, which I'm so excited about because I'm really proud of it as just a video in general, but also it's lovely to be able to see my experience documented like that and have that forever to be able to look back on the holiday so that's really nice as well. Today I am going to go into town work my cafe for most of the day just to mix it up a little bit. There's a new cafe in my town that I haven't been to yet so I want to try that out and see what that's like and then later on I'm doing a FaceTime for my friend Connie from Connie Reads's birthday with friends and yeah we're just gonna chill in the evening so that's all good, that's my day plan and I will catch up with you later. cafe or not my cafe I'm in a cafe it's completely empty on the top floor and it's got a really lovely view over the river that runs through my town which is really nice hang on I'll show you the view there's the view either side of me it's a bit grubby water but still nice views so I've got my smoothie that I've nearly finished and I had a Kinder Bueno Blondie which was delicious I have 40 minutes left of work and then after that I'm going to walk down to Waterstones because on Patreon live sprints last night we were talking about the love hypothesis and I was saying about how I felt it was really really hyped and that for me meant I was kind of hesitant to pick it up in case it didn't live up to that hype for me. Some of my patrons have said that they felt the same and they picked it up and absolutely loved it even though they thought they wouldn't so I might buy it. I might buy it. I've been putting it off this whole time but 
I'm gonna go to Waterstones and see if they have it, which I assume they probably will because there's a lot of copies of the Love Hypothesis about at the moment, but yeah, maybe, maybe we'll be buying that book later today. Malbook, 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 Malbooks didn't come in the mail because I bought them in the bookshop. Hey, here's my books. I got The Love Hypothesis. I'm going to say somewhat reluctantly because I have definitely been hesitant with the hype for this book. However, several of my patrons told me they think I would like it. Lauren from Fiction Tea thinks I would like it. I feel like I want to know if I like it. Do you know what I don't like though? This. Why are we printing stickers on books? No. I also picked up Great Circle by Maddie Shipstead. This is one that I had not heard of before, but I went in and asked the bookseller if they had anything that was a fictional story of travel and empowered women. I knew it was a bit of a random request, but this literally is what that is. So the blurb for this one is, from her days as a wild child in Prohibition America, to the blitz and glitz of wartime London, from the rugged shores of New Zealand to a lonely ice shelf in Antarctica, Marianne Graves is driven by a need for freedom and danger. Determined to live an independent life, she resists the pull of her childhood sweetheart, but it, it is an obsession with flight that consumes her most. On the verge of fulfilling her greatest ambition to circumnavigate the globe from pole to pole, Marianne crash lands in a perilous wilderness of ice. Over half a century later, troubled film star Hadley Baxter is drawn inexorably to play the enigmatic pilot on screen. It is a role that will lead her to an unexpected discovery, throwing fresh and spellbinding light on the story of the unknowable Marion Graves. Doesn't that sound quite interesting? For some reason it's not the kind of book I would normally reach for, however it ticked so many boxes for what I'm after, so I decided to pick it up and give it a go. It's also the one of the shortlisted books for the 2021 Booker Prize, so that hopefully means it's going to be absolutely brilliant. So I bought these two books and now I'm going to go make some dinner, watch another episode of Stranger Things, and then FaceTime with my friends later for Connie's birthday. So I'm going to crack on. Book mail. quick oh I threw the kindle <clears throat> hello swinging by to give you a very quick update with this book I'm just about to head off to the cinema to see Top Gun Maverick it is after work on Friday I feel like I've been really bad updating this vlog this week but the death of Mrs Westaway I have bleh feelings about this like I like the premise of it and I find it interesting and I want to know who this character is in relation to all these people because I don't even know if I've said what this is about have I this girl, she works on a pier as a fortune teller, she doesn't have any family around her, she's in a lot of debt, and she gets contacted saying that her grandma has passed away and she's inheriting a fortune, except her grandma died years ago and this isn't a grandma that was on the other side of the family or something. It, it, basically she doesn't know who this woman is. She decides she's going to try and get this money anyway and use her skills as a fortune teller to try and weave her way in and convince the people that she is who they think she is. So that's the premise and honestly I'm just finding it a bit there at the moment. There's a lack of questioning from our main character and I want the character to be more inquisitive and to be more curious. At the moment she just feels like she's quite timid whereas at the start for the first 20% of this she felt like she had a bit more oomph to her whereas now that seems to be drained out of her a bit more as the story goes on which is a shame but I will pause judgment until the end because with these kind of mystery thrillery I th thriller very lightly because at the moment it's so slow and I'm quite bored so I'm not feeling particularly thrilled but usually with these kind of books they can completely change by the end so 
I will hold judgment until the end, but at the moment, those are my thoughts. I don't know why I chose to sit here, it's very uncomfortable. But anyway, quick update before I head off to the cinema. It is now Friday after work, so I have the weekend free. I'm going shopping, I think, tomorrow with a friend, or doing something with a friend tomorrow. And then on Sunday, I'm going for a walk with my family. So I will be attempting to finish this today or tomorrow. I want to be able to finish this within the 48 hour readathon for whatever -thon. I don't even know if I've spoken about Whateverathon. Whateverathon is a readathon hosted by Maddie from Book Browsing Blog, and I am one of the team captains for Sunset Scholars. So this is the second week, but the first full week, I think. Is that right? Maybe that's not right. When did June start? I don't know. I was on holiday last week, so I feel like all the dates for me are thrown. But this is my third read for Whateverathon. So yeah, I, I kind of want to get through this one to then be able to move on to all the other books I have on my TBR for the month. Anyway, talking really fast because I need to go to the cinema. Goodbye. Good morning, it is Saturday. I am just about to head out of the house to do some shopping with my friend Kat in Southampton, but I wanted to drop by with two updates. Number one, I have decided to pick up the audiobook for The Death of Mrs. Westaway. I just wasn't vibing with it, I wasn't really wanting to pick it up, and as it is now the 48 hour readathon over this weekend, for whatever thon, I wanted to be able to finish that so I could then move on to some of my smaller books before I pick up Babel, which is just, just here, very excited. So I have decided to pick up the audiobook. I now have under two hours left in the audiobook, and I'm honestly enjoying the story a lot more so I feel like this is a good good decision so I'm enjoying it a lot more now I picked up the audiobook but still wanting it to go on and move on a little bit although we have had a couple of discoveries that have been moving it along so it's getting there also I went to see Top Gun Maverick last night and it was so good I re-watched the first one in during the week because I hadn't watched it since I was a teenager I don't think and I'm really glad I did because it meant a lot of it was still fresh in my memory to get the references from the first from the second film for the first film so there was not a lot of nostalgia in that second film for the first one there was a lot of high emotions high stake high drama I really enjoyed it it was really good there was more women in this film by like one woman we had a woman pilot so I think they could have done with having a few more women in it but it was still it was really good it was fun it was fast-paced it was action-packed and I felt like it had a good sense of emotion in there as well so I really like that I'm gonna dash out the door now but I will speak to you later Saturday evening. I've got back from shopping many hours ago. I managed to get the couple of bits that I was after. It was nice to see my friend Kat. It was a good trip. I have now just finished watching season four, part one of Stranger Things. I won't say anything. I'm not doing any spoilers. Don't worry. But yeah, I'm just kind of sat here processing. Really good show. If you haven't watched Stranger Things, would definitely advise. I'm now going to get ready for bed. Read a bed a little bit. I listened to about an hour or so of The Death of Mrs. Westaway on my drive. So I now have an hour and something left. I don't know if it's ambitious to try and finish it tonight before I go to bed, but I would really like to start Open Water tomorrow because I think I might be able to read that in a day and just help me tick the bingo prompts for whatever it's on. So that's potentially the plan. I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna get ready for bed now and then I will let you know in the morning how successful I was. Hello, it is Sunday afternoon and I have spent all morning reading. I'm currently on Whateverathon Sprints. I'm heading out very shortly because I'm going for a walk with my aunt and uncle and they're very cute dog. But this morning I have been able to finish two books for Whateverathon. So I'm really excited about that because I feel like I've not had a slumpy week. I've just had a busy week of doing lots of other things, mainly editing all my core food content and also <laughs> watching Stranger Things, which I, I have put on myself and can't really class that as being busy, but when I've had a chance to sit and read, I've basically been watching Stranger Things instead. And when I haven't had time to sit and read, it's because I've been editing the core food content. So I feel like I haven't read much this week. However, I have now finished The Death of Mrs. Westaway. This book was not the one. I really like Ruth Ware's writing style, especially One by One, which is one of my all time favorite thrillers. I think it's fantastic and so gripping and I really, really enjoyed reading that. However, I felt The Death of Mrs. Westaway could have branched out a little bit more. I felt like the plot didn't have many directions to go in. Therefore, it didn't feel like there was much intrigue because there wasn't many directions 
that I could see it heading in. So I felt like in that sense I was disappointed with this book unfortunately. So for me this one wasn't the best. This was a Patreon book club pick so I'm intrigued to discuss this with my patrons and see if they felt the same. I haven't run it through Corpal yet but I feel like we're looking at maybe a 3, maybe a 2.5, I don't know. It wasn't badly written, I just felt I wasn't engaged in the plot and I didn't feel the intrigue because I felt like it was all going in one certain direction. So for me, it just, it didn't hit the mark. But that was The Death of Mrs. Westaway. Then I also finished or started and finished another book this morning on sprints. So that book is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. This is a very short contemporary love story relationship journey book. This follows two different artists in London. We have a dancer and a photographer. It's told in second person narrative from the perspective of the photographer, which is a really interesting way of telling the story and isn't a narrative perspective I feel like I see a lot in the books that I read so that definitely painted a different type of picture looking back on the situation retrospectively as well. This book takes place over the course of the relationship that these two characters share with each other and how that evolves and changes. These are very short chapters and each chapter it feels like there's a couple of weeks in between the chapters so we're kind of moving throughout the course of I don't know how long it actually was taking part over but I felt like around a year maybe I could be really off with that but it definitely you could feel the progress of time but couldn't quite pinpoint when everything was happening I suppose I really enjoyed the way that this felt like more of an observational novel this was very much character driven and seeing through the eyes of our main character the narrator and seeing how they see things and there was a lot of mention of the beauty of books and what books can do for people and I really enjoyed that side of things and just seeing the world through this character's eyes was just a really beautiful and interesting way to read this book so I really liked this one again haven't run this through Cool Pie either but I feel like this will come out as around about four stars. So I was going to read Babel next however I am going to fit in one more book before I start Babel because I don't want to feel like I have to rush through Babel to then read my next read. So what I'm going to be reading now is Glorious Poisons by Kat Dunn. This is the final book in the Dangerous Remedy trilogy and I love this series so much. It is a fantasy set over the period of the French Revolution. I love this series so much. It's so fun and action-packed. Immediately book one is right into the action and book two and three have been exactly the same. I love the characters too. Adore them. They are so well written, so much fun to read about. It's just such a good book and it's perfect for everything because it fits quite a few of my different prompts. It's also LGBTQA+, so it's perfect for Pride and for June. Generally just really excited to read this book. So I'm on sprints at the moment. I think actually we're about to come off of sprints so I'm going to jump off now but yeah that is my updates. I will catch up with you later after I've been for my walk. Good evening. I am back from my walk. I have very gourmet cheesy chips in the oven for dinner and I am about to sit down and watch this film here. I have never seen Dead Poets Society. I feel like it's the kind of thing I would really enjoy and I know a lot of people really enjoy it. So I'm going to watch this tonight with my cheesy cheesy chips and then I'm going to read a bit more of Glorious Poison. Is that what it's called? I keep forgetting the name. Glorious Poison. It, I think. Hang on. Wait, it's here. Yes, Glorious Poison. I haven't read much more since I spoke to you last, but yeah, this and this is my plan for the evening. Hello, it is Sunday evening. I am very ready to get ready for bed now. I have finished Dead Poets Society and I have read a little bit more of my book, but I'm here to wrap up the vlog. So Dead Poets Society, I can definitely see why everyone likes it. I definitely enjoyed it. I at times felt like I wanted it to increase pace a little bit. However, it was very much more about the atmosphere. It definitely gave off intense if we were villain vibes. I felt like the visuals in my head from reading that book were very much mirrored with the visuals in this film. I feel like it definitely nailed the dark academia side of things. It did a really good job of portraying the passions and drives of these students and how turbulent their experiences are and what they're going through in that to try and be the people they want to be and this kind of feeling that they have of being invincible and being able to do anything which I feel like is definitely very much a mirror within the dark academia theme so that was really good I have read a little bit more of my current read I've literally read like 20 pages more still really liking it I love Kat Dunn's pacing it's just so fast paced but also gives you enough information that you care a lot about each of the individual characters you can see the setting very visually, visually in your head it has a really good blend of lots of different things so I'm really enjoying that but I'm gonna go get ready for bed now and then read a little bit more in bed I've got Patreon reading sprints tomorrow so I'm hoping I can read a good chunk then and then I will be moving on to reading Babel which I'm so excited about so this will be my next read after I finish Glorious Poison I need to sort everything out for whatever thon because I know that I haven't really worked out what prompts are ticking what anymore now that I've switch my TBR about a little bit so I need to do that but 
yeah, that's my little evening update. I think I'm just giving up in this vlog now. My hair is just doing all sorts of different things. I don't even know what I filmed this week, but hopefully it's been some semblance of okay, but thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what you have been reading this week and subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. I also have a Patreon where I post lots of extra content and I also have an online digital shop, which I will also leave linked down below. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.